In this video, I'm going to explain and demonstrate the storage replica feature of Windows Server 2025. Storage replica enables block level replication of volumes between servers or clusters for disaster recovery purposes. Storage replica has two different modes, synchronous and asynchronous. Because the replication occurs at the block level, there are no file locking issues and open files can be replicated between the source and destination volume. Synchronous replication ensures zero data loss at the file system level by mirroring volumes within low latency networks. Storage Replica's block level replication leverages volume shadow copy services, ensuring that volumes are crash consistent. Asynchronous replication allows you to replicate volumes beyond metropolitan ranges, though with the possibility of some data loss. You might use asynchronous replication to replicate an on-premises volume to Azure as a disaster recovery option. This will provide you with a very short recovery point objective window, but has the downside of the costs of running a virtual machine consistently in Azure. You might also use asynchronous replication to replicate a volume to a disaster recovery site if your organization maintains one. Storage Replica supports consistency groups. Storage Replica consistency groups in Windows Server enable replication of multiple volumes as a single unit while maintaining right order consistency. This ensures that when applications write data across multiple volumes, the data remains consistent during replication and recovery. Consistency groups preserve right order across volumes, which is essential for applications like SQL Server that write to multiple volumes simultaneously. All volumes in a consistency group share the same replication settings and direction, whether synchronous or asynchronous. This makes them ideal for database applications with separate data and log volumes, or any multi-tiered applications requiring cross-volume consistency. Each volume in the consistency group requires its own log volume, and all participating servers must have sufficient storage to accommodate the volumes being replicated. The volumes must be added to the group before replication begins, and they must all use the same replication mode. Synchronous replication demands networks of at least one gigabit per second and under five millisecond round trip latency, while asynchronous replication works with any network speed and latency. The key requirement is is storage volumes must be identical in size between source and destination. The standard edition of Windows Server only supports single volume replication. The data center edition of Windows Server supports replication of multiple volume. Both source and destination servers must be domain joined and the storage replica feature must be installed on both servers. Each partnership server needs two sets of separate volumes, a data volume for replication and a log volume for storage replica logging. Log volumes must be at least eight gigabytes and all volumes must use NTFS or ReFS formatting with identical sector sizes between source and destination. Storage replica cannot replicate from or to cluster shared volumes. When replicating multiple volumes, you should configure a separate log volume for each, though you might have multiple log volumes on the same physical disk. Generally, log volumes should have equal or better IO characteristics than the data volumes. Now I'll show you how easy it is to configure storage replica on Windows Server 2025. In this demo, I'm going to configure volume replication between two computers running Windows Server 2025 data center using Windows Admin Center, though as I'm only replicating a single data volume, it would have been possible to do this on the standard edition. I'm using Windows Admin Center because the alternative is using PowerShell. Storage Replica is a new enough technology that there isn't an old school Microsoft management console to get it done, and there isn't even a way of doing it in Server Manager. So I start in Windows Admin Center, connected to a gateway server. 
I'm using an account that has local administrator privileges on all of the servers involved. I connect to server TWT-Store A. I select the files and file sharing node. This is to demonstrate that the computer has three volumes, C, E, labeled data, and F, logs. I also show that there are no files and folders present on the data volume other than the normal recycle bin and system volume information folders. Next, I move to the storage replica node. The first thing that needs to be done is to deploy storage replica on this server. I select the restart the server automatically option. In the background, the role service installs and the server reboots and Windows Admin Center returns me to the list of servers on the All Connections page. Now I connect to the second server, TWT-Store B. Again, I select the Files and File Sharing node. This demonstrates an identical configuration of volumes C, E, labeled Data, and F, Logs. There is also no files and folders present on the Data volume other than the Recycle Bin and System Volume information folders. I move to the Storage Replica node. Deploy Storage Replica on this server and select the Restart the Server Automatically option. In the background, the role service installs and the server reboots and Windows Admin Center again returns me to the list of servers on the All Connections page. I clear out the notifications. I return back to TWT Store A and navigate back to the Storage Replica node. Now that Storage Replica is installed, I get the Storage Replica Administration page. I create a new Storage Replica partnership. I have the option of configuring replication between existing servers or having a partnership between a source server and deploying a new server in Azure. As this demo involves no cloud shenanigans, I choose use an existing server or VM as my option. Even though Storage Replica requires that both source and destination server be part of the same Active Directory environment, there is no ability to browse when selecting a source or destination server. So you'll have to type the fully qualified domain name. Once you do that, the storage configuration of the destination server will be determined. You also have to specify the replication group manually. In this case, none are present, so I just use the name Replica. I select the volume I named Data as the volume. I switch back to the traditional method as the enhanced log type is in preview and needs a different storage configuration. The traditional format can just use an existing volume as long as it's bigger than eight gigabytes. I select the volume I labeled Logs to host logs. Under Destination, I enter the fully qualified domain name twt-storeb.tailwindtraders.internal. The destination server is queried using my signed on credentials, and I go through and specify the destination data and log volumes. Remember that source and destination data and log volumes should be the same size and configured with the same formatting options. I review but don't enable any of the advanced options. You can see here in Windows Admin Center that it's possible to configure whether replication is synchronous, the size of the log, use existing seeded blocks, whether replication traffic is encrypted, whether consistency groups are enabled, and whether compression is enabled. I choose Create. Creating the replication partnership takes a couple of minutes which I'll speed up here using the magic of television. I am prompted at this point for my credentials on the servers to allow PowerShell double hop, which I think involves Jeffrey Snover, a pogo stick, and a trampoline, or perhaps I was reading the wrong documentation. So I log in again. This new web-based administration method is all supposed to be single sign-on, but Windows Admin Center can be a bit idiosyncratic. As the replication process is still being negotiated, we can use the Event Viewer tab to view events related to the configuration of replication. In the Admin log, I can see a warning event. This event is related to the configuration of Storage Replica. If you are trying to set up a replication partnership and something isn't working, come here to check the logs. 
I return to the Partnerships tab and see that continuous replication now is occurring between TWT Store A and TWT Store B. I can view the partnership details. The next thing I'm going to do, because I demonstrated that when I set this up there wasn't anything present on the data volume, is create a file and folder. I'm still connected in Windows Admin Center to TWT Store A, which is the source server. To create a file and folder, I go to the Files and File Sharing node. Select the data volume. I select New Folder and give it the imaginative name Example Folder. I do the same thing to create an empty file named Example File. Remember that this is all on TWT Store A, which is the source server. I now use Windows Admin Center to switch to TWT Store B. When I navigate to the Files and File Sharing node, you'll notice that the data volume that was present before is now not visible. This is because this is the secondary server in the Replication Partnership. Next, I go down to the Storage Replica node. When I select this node on the secondary server, I see the existing partnership that the server is participating in. I switch the direction of the replication so that TWT Store B is now the primary and TWT Store A is the secondary. Now that the replication direction is switched, I return to the Files and File Sharing node and see that the data volume is mounted and active and has the example folder and file that I created on TWT Store A present. So there you have it. An introduction to storage replica and a demonstration of configuring replication between two Windows Server 25 servers. I hope you found it informative and I'll see you in the next video.